Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. Um, today we're in Oregon, B and I. Um, we're at the pilot here in um, Stanfield, Oregon. But I wanted to share a couple of things that happened earlier today on the road. Um, so I went into um, a Love's over in Idaho and I kind of needed to stop for a bathroom break and this is what I saw. Come on, loves. I mean, it's flipping toilet paper, okay? You opened a new truck stop, it looks great. You got all sorts of little chinkaderos that no one really needs to buy. It's just for kids to look at when they come in with their parents. But you know, having toilet paper like is kind of a big deal for people like me who sometimes wait a little too long. And uh, when we finally do get to a truck stop, need to really take care of business. So anyway, so that's that particular loves and that's like in that was out like kind of by mountain home so anyway so i was like all right i'll get back on the road and you know i felt okay for a and then i'm like okay well i'll just stop at this next loves um in ontario oregon so just across the river from idaho and um yeah, so they had toilet paper, so that was cool. But I also found something else out uh, while I was there, so let me show you that. So this is the Loves here in Ontario, Oregon. Ontario, Oregon, right off 84. And then, so here's the driveway coming into Loves. And right here, like right next to the parking lot, it's the drive-through cannabis store. Now, I don't know if I can get my truck through there. It's a little, plus it's a little early in the morning. But if you, but that that and that actually is the main store. The drive-through is really this little kiosk over here, the one with the giant blunt on it. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, you gotta love Oregon. Anyway, I thought. Oh, and by the way, I I just I just have been in the loves place is totally sold out of snack food. There's no Funyuns, none of those hot fries, nothing. So that's that's the downside to having the dope store right next to the truck stop. So anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, anyway, um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and you know, the funny thing is that all the people at the Loves seemed a lot more pleasant like they were just happy to be there happy to be there so anyway that's you know that's cool so then I stopped to fuel and you know I do check my fuel prices on my prime app so I stopped to fuel at a flying J I think and um, I didn't realize you know because kind of saw the sign that said you got to have commercial vehicles got to have some tax number and I'm like oh that probably doesn't apply to me because I work for Prime right the largest refrigerated carrier in the world and they probably got all this taken care of already I, I won't even have to worry about that so I get to the Flying J and I go to start pumping and it's like give us your tax ID number and I was like what is that? So then there was a guy pumping next to me. I'm like, hey, have you pumped here in Oregon before? And he said, yeah. And I said, what's this tax ID? I said, is that just my if the number? And he's like, yeah. And then he made some comment about Oregon being a blue state. And I'm like, you know what? The fuel is way cheaper here than it is over in Idaho. Like, like 80 cents a gallon cheaper. So I'm like, I don't care what color they are. They could be green for all I care. You know, I'm cool with that. You know, it's cheaper fuel. So I got the IFTA number and then I had to put my license plate number in. So, in, in fact, this is the first time I've ever driven a, driven, <laughs> first time I've ever driven um, a semi in, in Oregon and tomorrow will be the first time in Washington. Every other state but those. Um, but so... If you come to Oregon and you and you know you go to a pump, 
and they say tax number, that's what they're looking for is just the number off the IFTA sticker. You don't have to get your, you know, IFTA card out of the binder or anything like that. Just that six digit number. And then your license plate on the front of your tractor. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was my experience um, getting here. And we're kind of down the road from Pendleton, and I wanted to like uh, just mention Pendleton. It's like where the Pendle Pendleton Woolen Mill Woolen Mills um, is. So if you know if you like flannel shirts, um, that's the good stuff. Um, I still like wearing wool in the winter time. Um, I I feel like there's a, I feel like there's a reason that people have been wearing wool for centuries. And um, having a North Face puffy coat is not like a priority for me. So anyway, um, so somebody asked me a question about Prime's employment verification. And so I wanted to talk, since I've been at really one, two, five different trucking companies, um, I thought I would talk a little bit about my experience at each of them and kind of the differences and also what what you can expect in, in, in certain places. So the first trucking company I worked for was Estes Express. Now I was hired as a dock worker slash CDL trainee. I got the standard like one day orientation. I did have to take a drug test. It was just the normal urinalysis. Um, I don't think they verified Jack at that company. They just want bodies. Um, and the reason I left there, if you haven't watched my other videos on this is because they didn't send me to CDL school and I was like, I'm not, I didn't, you know, I wasn't looking for a loading dock job. I, I just thought I was killing time. So then I left there and I went to night and I got my CDL at night. Now, it's at night they do both a urinalysis and they do a hair follicle test. And the other thing they do at night is they have a like, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's basically a physical aptitude test and maybe that's what it is called. But they make you lift stuff one of the exercises they do is they give you a like a weight and you got to hold it out in front of you and and lift it up you know so basically you're just using your shoulder muscles and that's supposed to simulate what it's like to try to pull the pull the pin on a volvo because volvos you have to lift them up move them forward and then pull so and i know people have failed that test um you know and and not made it past <laughs> not made it past that stage um, the other thing I will say is periodically I've had people like you know make a comment or shoot me a message or whatever about hey you know what kind of drug tests do they do you know blah 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 and I'm and, and I kind of I kind of like I don't like those questions and the reason I don't is this if you don't know that you can pass a drug test and as many drug tests as they give you right like if you don't know you can pass every drug test like a pre-employment offer drug test a drug test when you get to orientation a drug test after you get your CDL I mean you if you're gonna come into this industry you are subject to being tested at any time. And I know that night, actually I did random tests because my trainer got a call from his terminal manager one time and was and they were like, hey, you need to take a drug test when you get back to the terminal. So, and I, I mean, he certainly hadn't had any wrecks or anything with me. So I'm assuming they just do randoms. Um, but you can, that's, that's a thing, right? Like you can be tested at any time. Um, so it, if, you know, if you still want to go shopping at those places, like I showed you that, that are next to loves, that's cool. I, I don't have any issue with that, right? I think the feds are going to unschedule 
or deschedule of marijuana anyway. Um, so I don't really care. But I'm just telling you, if you're coming into this industry, just know that that's not going to be your lifestyle anymore or even, you know, a casual thing if you want to keep a job. The other thing is, if you don't know you can pass a drug test, don't apply to a company because when you do and you take it, it you know, you can't just fail a drug test anymore in the trucking industry. Because if you fail it with carrier A, carrier B is gonna know about it, carrier C is gonna know about it. Why? Because it's in the clearinghouse. And here's the thing about the clearinghouse. That's semi-public information, and so you could even go to a different company, like outside the industry, and if they say, hey, did you ever fail a drug test? And you're like, oh no, I never failed a drug test they might still have access to the clearinghouse. I guarantee that data mining companies like LexisNexis and others, uh, Kroll is another K-R-O-L-L, -L. if you see that Kroll is gonna do a background on you at some other company and you failed a drug test with a trucking company, I guarantee they're gonna find out you failed the drug test. Now, it might be like five years later and you say, yeah, I did fail a drug test. But if you, if you lie about that, it's probably still gonna come out and it may cost you a job. So anyway, I just share that with you. So going back to night, hair follicle and urine test, okay? Um, then I went to Jane R. Shugel, just a, a urine test. Oh, and let me say one thing about the physical that I took at night. Knight pays for that physical, but guess what? Even if it's a good physical, like like if, if a company pays for the physical, you don't own those results, even though it's yours, right? And so if you go back, because you're going to work for another company, and they say, oh, let us just get a copy of your long form physical. If you, if you had, gone to a company that they pay for it and the results go directly to them, that the organization that did your physical will not release that to you. You're going to have to pay to get a new physical. So I just sh share that with you. That's another kind of bump in the road. So I went to JNR Shugel. I paid for my own physical, went there. Everything was fine. Normal, normal urinalysis. Same at GP Transco. And then um, while I was at GP Transco, I paid to get a new physical and I have a two year physical and I just forwarded that information to Prime when I got hired at Prime. So, and Prime just did a urinalysis, okay? And so somebody was asking me a question about um, like employment verification at Prime and so, I, I, I did answer the question, but it's in a previous, it, it's not the latest video before this one, but it's a previous video. But I did want to just say what, what happened with me, that way if other people have questions about it and are coming to Prime or thinking about applying to Prime. So they verified all my previous employment going back, I think, I think they go back 10 years. I can't remember, but the, I do know that they waited to verify my employment at GP Transco until I had notified GP Transco that I was leaving. Now, I've said in the past, like in comments on other people's um, YouTube channels, that you know you don't have to give any notice. Companies ask for two weeks notice, but trust me when I tell you no company will give you two weeks notice that they're gonna fire you or lay you off. That's not how it works. And so since you're an at-will employee and they're an at-will employer, they can get rid of you on like a half, an, you know, a moment's notice, right? They could be like, hey, give us your badge and have you escorted out. Um, so you don't have to give them notice. You don't have to be nice about it if you don't want to. Now with, um, with um, Shugel, I didn't give any notice because I didn't trust them. With GP Transco, I trusted them. Uh, you know, 
I mean, I had a good relationship with lots of people there. So I, you know, I let my DM know. I said, hey man, this is gonna be, you know, my last week or whatever. And so he let everybody know, and, you know, and it was seamless, no, no hard feelings. You know, I ran all my loads that he needed me to. I did whatever I needed to and brought the truck back to the terminal in one piece. And, you know, it was, like I said, it was, uh, it was all professional and seamless. But so the answer to my question about like the employment verification, I kind of gave a caveat that I was what Prime calls an A seat driver, like the letter A. And they have several categories of seats. And so I thought, you know, just kind of explain it, because they don't really explain it that well. They're just like, oh, you're coming in as an A seat, you're coming in as a C seat, whatever. They don't really explain it that well. And I guess you're just supposed to figure it out. So I thought I would just kind of demystify it a little bit and list all the different seats here. So an A seat driver is an experienced driver who needs no additional training to get on the road solo um, or you know as a, as a full-fledged member of a team a B seat driver is a driver that has some experience but they still need some training with an A seat driver to be kind of upgraded to an A seat um, a C seat driver is somebody that holds a CDL but has never been like over the road, never had any training over the road. Um, they know just enough to pass the CDL test. A D seat driver at Prime is a CDL student. So they're somebody with a permit. Um, an E seat driver, so E as in echo, is someone who is not interested in prime okay so they're 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 considered an e seat they're not interested in working for prime an f seat driver so foxtrot f seat driver someone who is not interested in driving a truck at all whether it's prime or another company they just they have zero interest in driving a truck so they're going to be an f seat a g seat driver is someone who is under the age of 10 or is already deceased so either category um, under the age of 10 or already deceased and then an H seat driver so a hotel H for hotel that's an experienced driver who is coming from either Western Express or Werner okay so those are the categories A through H um, so you know the thing about applying is to any company is be as thorough as possible um, you know get all the information and like I told this person um, and I, I apologize I can't remember your name um, I told them hey make sure you bring a hard, a hard copy of the application you submit electronically to prime bring that hard make make a copy bring a hard copy with you because they're gonna have you do another application at orientation and candidly it's not because they lost your application they're probably looking for discrepancies and then they're gonna make you clear up those discrepancies before they okay you before they say yeah this person's good to go so Anyway, I just wanted to share those little tidbits um, in applying or doing doing stuff like that. And I'm probably going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do another video today, but I, I wanted to also talk about, and I'll kind of tease this, but I also wanted to talk about the trucking industry as a fresh start, but also how you can use trucking to really as a vehicle no pun intended to do something else to go to a next step so anyway stay tuned for that but anyway thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you next time on Tim Travels bye